We all know that Rachel Imenu gave up being buried in Maris Amachpela with Avram, Yitzchak, ya- Yaakov, Sarah, Rivka, Leah. Why? Because she wanted to be on the way out. So when the Eden are, are in, going to exile, going to Golis, by the Chorba Mesa Migdash, that she'll be able to be there for them. Right? They'll, they'll feel a little bit of mommy warmth. And it's brought out, if you think about it, what children were these that she's giving up, living forever in, in, in the Beis HaChayim with her husband Yaakov. She's giving that up as a Yiddish mom and gives up everything for their child. But what kind of a child? These were children that were alive by the Beis HaMikdash and were macher of the Beis HaMikdash. They brought idols into the Beis HaMikdash. They were, they were in terrible, terrible Ruchniyistic estate. And then, because, because of their sins, the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed. Hashem was crying. It says the Ferish in the Medrash, I brought it down in GPS. You would think that at the time, people think Hashem was like angry. Hashem went ahead and told him, Allahim, leave me alone so I can cry privately. Hashem was crying and he says, Kayhane, where are my Kayanim? Where are my Leviim? What happened here? It was, the way the Medrash explains, there was an energy keeping the Beis HaMikdash alive. And when you pull the plug, when you do Avayi Zara, it just, it, it, that's just a direct reaction of, of the Bria, of this super magical, above nature Bria, that all the, all the miracles were there, but it was all based on the Amun HaMitachan and Hashem. And when that was pulled away, or by Sinas Chinam, it's very interesting that the Nesiva Shalom says that, you know, the first base of Mikdash we know was Gilea Arayis, Avayi Zara, and Shvi Chastamim. The three big, big, big Averis. The second one was Sinas Chinam. Sinas Chinam really is just a lav. It's just, it's, it's a minor, it's not a good thing, but compared to the three big ones that you have to die, it doesn't say that you're, if someone puts a gun to your head and says, tell me Lashon Hara, that you have to, to die. Right? People sometimes die to tell Lashon Hara, but they don't die to not tell Lashon Hara. So why, why was that Machr Debe Semingdu? So he explains that Ki'ilu, you build a huge building, What's holding it together? The bricks, what's holding the bricks and the stones together? Cement. The cement of the Beis Amigdash was a Havas Yisrael. The cement was Achtos. He says it wasn't that it was such a bad affair, but it, it made the, what holds the binyan together evaporate. And it, it falls away. It's also brought down that the first three big Averis that, that destroyed the first Beis Amigdash, it was only 70 years. And then we were back. But for this Avera of Sinas Chinam, it's thousands of years because it says that the first Beis Amigdash, that the, the, the reason that it was destroyed was revealed to us. And the second one, it wasn't revealed. So what does it mean it wasn't revealed? It was revealed that it was Sinas Chinam. And as far as I'm saying, because it's not something that, that we chap, that, that it's not revealed to us that we're doing it again and again. In any case, that's, that's what we had. We had a Beis Amigdash. And these are the kids that destroyed the Beis HaMikdash through their actions, through making big trouble. And then physically, they're put in chains. They were murdered. There was blood f- flowing in the streets. And the rest of them are, are if you could imagine a picture of it, Mamish in chains, no belonging, slaves. We're in the bottom of the world. We lost everything. From being in the Beis HaMikdash the year before, top of the world. On top of the world, everybody came and broke Harbanis and every we were on top of the world, Ruchnius, Gashmius, Nafshius, and now we lost everything. And 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 for these kids, Rachel Imenu says, but I gotta be there to give them an emotional hug that they can they can visit me on the way into Gullus. That's a mother. Not just for the good kids going through a hard time. That no matter what, where you go, you hit rock bottom or there is no rock bottom, there's another bottom under that. No matter what condition you end up being, a mama is a mama. That's what a Yiddish mama is all about. And fathers also, we have to do the same thing. We, have to, we are with you no matter what you do, no matter what happens to you, no matter, no matter anything, because you're their ticket back. A lot of what we're doing is that they're being pushed away and we're paving the road behind them. So as soon as they turn around, they don't have to be 20 years later in, in, in who knows where and saying, oh, I wish, maybe I, I would like to go home, but my parents said you're dead to me. We want, as soon as they're ready for anything, 
they should they should be upstairs and they come downstairs and they got the cholent and they got and we have kids saying you know Baruch Hashem they start using Jewish words they start maybe I'll go to shul for for the shayfer we're drawing them back in and we're not letting their dysfunction and their very often terrible sins or, or, or really bad situations disconnect the respirator from them. Because once you're disconnected, they're gone. And that's our avoida, that no matter what we need to do, we will continue extending ourselves to be connected to you. And that's what Hashem does. It says that Hashem has you gimomidis, and that's what we're doing. That's what you're all, you're all living on the highest level. You're rachom and achanon, Erechapayim, they say, Avain, no matter what happens, you're going to be there for your kids with the Yud Gimomidis. But the Yud Gimomidis, Harachamim, are for who? The Tzadikim, if you never sin, you don't need Rachamim. You could live with Din. So the Mepharshim say, who, who is it going? Who's the Rachamim for? Not for the Tzadikim, it's for the Rishayim. They need more Rachamim. So I came up with a cute idea. I wrote it in GPS. I don't know if it's true, it's just. You know, you look in the Torah, it says Hashem, Yud Kei Vav Kei. Then there's a line. And then it says again, Hashem, Keel, Racham, Chanan. So the Mepharshim say, I think it's the Rebbeinu B'chaya, that the first Hashem is the name of Hashem. Hashem is Yud Kei Vav Kei, that's his name. And he is Be'etzem Arachum, Be'etzem Merciful. That is the name of mercy of Hashem. Then there's a line. And then it starts giving us the Yud Gimel Midas Arachim, the first one being Hashem again, his extra Rachamim, and then a Rachum Chanon Erechapayim. It's very interesting to read the, the Talmud Devar. That's why I send it out every Sunday, that we should learn that Mid of the week. It's five, ten minutes. It's not a big deal. And live like that with our kids. It changes everything, the way we look at people, and, and we bring out the mercy of Hashem. So I said, like, there's a line, right? So the Pshat is that the first Hashem is Hashem's essence. You know, like he's merciful. Like, like all you parents, you're good people, you're nice people. Then your kid goes over the line. Everybody says, where's the line? There's a red line. When we go over the line, then Hashem starts to, okay, now I got to be a Rachum and a Chanan and a Chapayim and a Rav Chasa. Hashem adds these Midos onto his essence. He has to, now, now I got to be a nice Ava and I got to carry the iniquity, the sin, until, until he does Tshuva. And like the Talmud Devera brings out, that when a person does an Avera, they create Mashchisim, angels that want to suck your blood or kill you, and Hashem is Zonim Mefarnes, he feeds these angels, stay away from my kid, like the drug dealer. The kid owes the drug dealer $5,000, and the parents say, here, take the money, stay away from my kid. Hashem, Kesheng Shizonim Mefarnes, is Kolo Elam Kuloi, says the time of the just like he gives everybody sustenance and every animal and every creature, otherwise they'd be dead. Also, Hashem is feeding the angels, the Malachi Chavala, Mashchisim, that want to come after us after we take Hashem's wallet, we use his energy, his life, his brain, everything that he gave us, and we sin against him, and he pays off the guy, don't beat up my kid, don't beat up my kid, Shema Yasa Tshuva. And he waits for us to do Tshuva, Ad Hashem is the ultimate, and that's what we are going to be as well. That's what you parents are doing. So we have to understand that a mother and a father, a Yiddish mother and a father, never ever disconnects from their child even if the child gets off the bed, and the only way they can live is being connected to the respirator, the child gets off the bed and they start running out, you start getting extension cords for that, ex for that respirator. You get another, okay, we need another extension cord, because you can't afford for that respirator to stop. Your flow of loving energy is the respirator that keeps them alive. Keeps them alive, keeps them alive, and gives them hope for the future, because my parents, Believe in me, I could maybe one day hope to believe in myself, even though I have extremely low self-esteem and I feel like a nothing, but these people keep on complimenting me and, and everyone in the family, every compliment is life-saving. There's no bigger mitzvah to do than to compliment someone who's sad and broken. And on the other hand, if my own mother and father don't like me, to death sentence, Rahman al He told me one time, he said, my parents don't like me. And if they don't like me, I'm not a likable person. I can't be a likable person if my own mommy doesn't like me. You have such a responsibility to show I like you no matter what the exterior looks like. No matter what the exterior looks like. There is an interior hurting person that has such enormous pain that I'm not good enough for my parents. My mommy, my daddy don't like me. They're not proud of me. 
is, is something that hurts them. And that pain is an extra pain on top of whatever broke them that they can't get out of. And then drugs or whatever it is, that, that's, that's when they sink to the worst, worst stuff. And we look at the bad behavior and we say, but look what he did, but look what he did. We give the medicine and they stop doing it. A lot of parents will say that their kid, like this guy on the, on the, on the Zoom call who was giving chizuk to this new father, he said, my daughter called me Hitler. Hitler. A daughter should call a father a Hasidish father or Litvish father or, or Sephardic father. It doesn't really matter. It's what could be worse. And if you saw a video of this girl calling her father Hitler, you would say, no hope for her. Today, her best friend in the entire world is her father. She says it straight up. She's recovered in, in, in every way that they had. She didn't leave the room for two years. She's out. She's working. She's, she says, I don't need anybody. I have my father. And she doesn't use the word anymore. And she doesn't lie anymore. She doesn't steal anymore. She doesn't cut herself anymore. And what was the therapy? Mommy and daddy. The power of parents. That's, what, that's the power that you have.